All right, guys, what's going on? So for my first video lesson, I wanted to make, I wanted to be about pump and dumps because that's my favorite setup. So we're going to talk about my two trades here on FRLI. Um, but before I get into the trade, I want to talk about why I wanted to go over these trades and why they're important to me. So we're going to go into, you know, what, what makes your, for your system, how you trade, what's an ideal setup for you? How do you find an ideal setup for you? You know, what, what's going to be your favorite setup going into the future? So, you know, everyone kind of talks about how certain setup you trade might have, you might give them a rank, you know, maybe it's one through five, one through 10, maybe it's A, B, C, like I'm doing here, but here, let me zoom in a little bit so we can see better, right? So for me, pump and dumps are an A setup. Overextended gap downs are a B, technical breakouts are a C. Some, some technical breakouts might be A's for other people, but for me, I'm not good at trading breakouts, so they're a C for me. But that alone isn't enough, right? You want to look at more details into every setup because certain details are going to make setups become better or even give yourself a better grade. So perfect example, I'm giving pump and dumps an overall rating of NA rank, right? But if I see that they have conforming or confirming price action, right? If it looks just like any other pump and dump I've ever traded, that's a plus, right? If I can find that, that the promotion is actually being paid for, right? There's actually people behind the promotion paying for it. That's another plus. If, for example, we'll go over this later with FRLI, if it's got a caveat emperor, emperor or I don't even know how to pronounce it, but essentially it means buyer beware, that is also a major plus for the setup, right? So this might turn in from an A to like an A++++, right? It's going to be the best setup that I could possibly trade for my system. Overextended gap downs, right? If you have heavy resistance, if there's dilution, if there's a morning spike that's going to give you a good entry to like shorten to strength, right? All these are going to be good for it, and this might even turn into an A, right? Technical breakouts, I'm not that good at them, right? But if there's a clear breakout level, if there's a news and catalyst to bring in good volume, if there's nice consolidation prior to the breakout, all of a sudden this might be a C, but with all these things going for it, I might be th think it's worth the play for, right? So that being said, we're going to go over the details of FRL FRLI and why I took so much size to make such a nice profit of, you know, two $2,700 trades to make 5400 So... All right, let's go into it. So here is FRLI. Uh, I actually noticed it way back here in the beginning of uh, 2019. This right here is a little bit of a pumpish looking move. Uh, and so I shorted a little bit. I think I made like 600 bucks. I eventually covered because it wasn't, the price action didn't keep confirming for me that it was a pump, right? It's at some point I became realizing like this isn't for me. I don't know if this is a pump anymore. I'm getting out. Now come in April and May, all of a sudden you see this huge burst of volume, right? Like no meaningful news, no volume, and all of a sudden hits April, lately April into May, big volume, right? And then you see this price action slowly, like there's red candles, but it's slowly grinding up day after day. And so for some people who haven't seen a pump and up before, you might not know this is pump action, right? But the more pumps you see, the better experience you're going to have. For example, BSPK. This was a pumping up years ago, or about a year and a half ago, right? You go here, boom, look at this. Look at this action. All of a sudden, big volume, red candles, but slowly grinding, right? Me seeing FRL high like this immediately reminded me of BSPK. Another one, OL, OLMM. This one, go back, I think two years as well. Boom. It's actually got promoted twice here and here, but yeah. This also reminded me of it. A little more green candles, but again, just slow grinding, right? So when I saw this, I immediately, so that's number one. That's right here. Boom, confirming price action. We got that down. Okay, it's got that going for it. Next, I want to find a confirm paid promotion. For a while, I couldn't find anything. All I knew was that it had the volume, it had the chart. So I did take a small starter shorting it. But I was willing to add more size if I could find, you know, who's actually behind this, who's promoting it. So I was fortunate enough that Michael Good, the legend himself, posted this landing page um, about the pump. And so what's funny, you notice it says June 1st. That's the day I'm making this video. But this landing page has been up for probably a week or two now. So they're trying to trick people who see this landing page into that it was written the day they saw it when that is not the case. So we're going to go through this article a little bit. So it's intro, little video there. Boom, right here. It gives you a ticker, FRLI. 
oh my gosh, you know, they're just, they're blowing smoke up all your ass asses. Or any sucker who wants to believe this. Oh, they're going to grow, you know, to $200,000 in revenue. Keep going, keep going. You know, nice little charts. Oh, they're going to do something with your DNA. Keep going. Ticker, the ticker is everywhere, right? They want you to know that that's the ticker. They're going to work with, you know, 23andMe and Ancestry.com. But none of this matters, really. Really, you don't even have to look at any of this. This doesn't mean anything. Keep going, keep going. Oh, of course, they're going to include Jeff Bezos in this one, you know. Keep going. None of this matters. Here we go. You want to go to the very end. The disclaimer. The disclaimer is all that matters. You're going to skim through it. Right here. This is a paid advertisement intended solely for information, educational purposes, which is total bullshit. Keep going. Right here. Total budget of approximately $2,183,616 to cover the costs of associating with creating, printing, and distributing this advertisement. Right there. Okay. They don't care whether where the stock goes, where it's in the future. They're just being paid millions of dollars to promote this stock. The boom, right there. Next one, another plus, confirmed paid promotion. Okay, so that's what gave me conviction. Let's go here. So I remember shorting a little bit more. I was using, when I was shorting though too, I was using like $3 as a guide. I was trying to see how high could this pump go. And I was thinking it could get around three. That was my like worst case scenario. So then it actually started dumping earlier than I thought. It kept dumping, kept dumping. And this bounce here, it actually started getting promotional emails as well. So again, another form of paid promotion. They had the landing page, they had paid emails. So that even confirmed me more. So when this bounce happened, I was still okay staying short. The next thing that's so crucial, and this is huge, is the caveat emperor, or emptor, the paid per, or buyer beware. So if you go to otcmarkets.com here, type in the ticker, F-R-L-I, Right here, that's skull and crossbones. Right here, it's huge. When a stock gets this symbol, it's toast, right? It's just buyer beware. This is a public interest concern associated with the company. When a company gets this stock and you're long, you know, prepare to give your entire, all your money goodbye. You might as well just bank wire me the tra or your money. It's gonna be way easier, way less painful for you. And I don't have to stay short. You're just gonna give me your money. And it said it's stock promotion. So really, OTC Markets is telling you <laughs> what's going to happen to the stock. It's telling you what this company is worth, right? So it got the caveat emperor. It got, and that was on this day. So it pretty much gapped down to two, all the way to 175. And then on that day, I knew this stock's going on a dollar, right? Almost every co every company, every pump and up that I've seen to get the skull and crossbones is toast, right? Let's, let's look a couple examples for you guys. LRGR pumping up from probably another year and a half ago. Let's go here. Okay. Right, you got the caveat. You've got the skull and crossbones right here. Just complete death, right? Let's look at, uh, what's another one? URSL. It's loading here. Let's go back. All right, got the skull and crossbones on this day. Here's the gap down. And it actually, tr it actually scared some people out. It gapped down big and actually had a green candle. Um, which was kind of scary, but of course the next day it dies and that happens sometimes the most recent one besides FRLI to get the skull and crossbones is O O I L Right huge gap down didn't dump right away and then dump the next day huge 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 loss 90% <clears throat> off its highs, right? so I knew this going into the going into this pump. When it got the skull and crossbones, I wanted to add more. And that's why I have two trades. I have this one from Interactive Brokers. And then once it got the skull and crossbones, I then looked for sure to short at Cobra. So I shorted it with Cobra on I think this day. I couldn't find shares on the day it got the actual skull and crossbones, but this day I added short in and I was willing to hold my goal for both brokers was to short and hold under a dollar. And so, so yeah, after I now have all three, what I'm looking for, you know, that's why I was willing to add with Cobra. Cause I'm thinking this is the, this, this setup couldn't get any better for me, right? This has everything I'm looking for. And so that's when you add size. And the reason why I'm going, want to go over this is because sometimes in a slow market, knowing what setups are ideal for you is absolutely crucial, right? And I actually did some stats to show you guys. So in March, April, and May, there was a pump each month. There was NHL in March, 
OOIL in April, and FRLI in May. These, the profits I made with these three pumps made the majority of my profits for the entire month. NHEL was 40% and both OIL and FRLI were about 70%. Now that's not what I necessarily want, right? You'd like to think, you know, most of my profits are pretty even through the month. I'm not like depending on one big play, but when the market's slow and you have an ideal setup that like presents itself, you need to know that that's your ideal setup and you need to know what you're looking for so you can, you know, take advantage of it, right? I don't have to worry necessarily so much about how much money I'm going to make when I see a, a, such, such an ideal setup as these pump and dumps and I'm able to size in and that profit pretty much makes my entire month, you know, like having a profit that makes up this much percentage of your month is, is huge. And I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't know what were the small details about a setup that I look for, right? Which is these right here. And so I'm, so I'm short, you know, I got everything going for it. I added and all I had to do was wait, right? You know, there's the price action. We can go to the intraday here. Right? There's a lot of bounces. There's a lot of spikes. There's a couple. There's a little squeeze right here. Kind of scared. Scared me out a little bit. But I didn't cover any, which was good. But the point is, I had conviction, right? Like I said, this pump and up had all the indicators I was looking for. So all I needed was patience. I needed to wait. I needed just to sit back and relax. And of course, over, you know, about two to three weeks, it went from a pump and it dumped, right? And then it was later earlier this week, it went below $1 and I covered the rest in like the 80s and 90s. And that's that. So hopefully this helps. If you guys have any questions, you know, let me know. If you guys have any maybe videos you want me to make in the future, also let me know. Happy to help you guys. I'll see you guys next time. See ya.